Hello there, my name is Kate from Beautiful Light Home and I'm so glad that you could join me today. Um, I previously posted a video about my children and I, what we do for our May circle time. And today I wanted to go through and tell you what the different components of my circle time are. Um, before I get into that, what I wanted to first discuss is what is the purpose of circle time? So first of all, my children are five and three. They really fall into, in just a few months, they'll be six and four. Um, so they both kind of fall into, in the Waldorf perspective, in the kindergarten stage. Um, my daughter's pretty much in like the early childhood education piece, but by the time she's four, she'll be in what's considered kindergarten. Um, in the Waldorf educational system, uh, kindergarten is really like a, an age range from four to about six and then they'll start seven, uh, they'll start first grade when they turn seven. So since both of my children are in that early childhood slash kindergarten realm, circle time is a really big piece of what our education at home is. Now, with that being said, in Waldorf education, circle time will pretty much always happen from the time that they are in that early childhood education from kindergarten all the way through essentially all the grades. Now it grows and changes over the years, but circle time is always a main component of what Waldorf education presents to its students. And the reason why is because circle time will grow and evolve, but it is always just a warm up. It is a warm up of our bodies and our minds. It's to get us thinking and feeling for the day. And it's a great time period to work on memorization. Um, it's a great time period to work on recitations. When children get a little bit older, right now what we do mostly is songs and finger plays and calendars and talking about the seasons, but as the children get older and as they start going through the grade schools, they will do more math facts every day, spelling every day. And again, they'll do this in an engaging manner that wakes up the body and wakes up the mind so that this way they're really ready to learn. So that's the whole purpose of circle time. And like I said, that's going to grow and change as the, the children get a little older. Okay, so now that we understand a little bit of the purpose behind circle time, or like I said, as they get older, that will just turn into a warm up time period. Um, when we, how do we begin our circle time? So because my children are really in that kindergarten realm, a lot of what we do is mostly finger plays and songs and um, little hand motions and things like that. Um, so, what I actually do is I have my bell back here. So normally they're out playing. We have our living room that doubles as our homeschool room. I like having that space separate because if they are playing with something, they don't feel like they have to like completely clean it up and move it for us to be able to do our schoolwork. Uh, that's just how it works in our house because I, I did that before and I got a lot of resistance and pushback. So I set up in our living room where I just make sure everything's ready in there, I take a moment for myself to just gather myself, and then I ring this bell. I'm pretty sure we got this at a Christmas store a couple years ago, but I ring the bell, and they love it. They come running in. Um, most days they love it and come running in. Um, some days I'm met with a little resistance because they wanna keep playing whatever they were playing, but they know based on our rhythm that this is what we do every day. And they come on in and they shake my hand and they say good morning to me. I know that seems a little bit formal, but in an actual Waldorf classroom, the children are greeted at the door by their teachers and they're expected to shake the hands of the teacher. And I feel like it just really, um, it teaches good manners and respect. And I feel like it's a really good thing for them to learn, even if they're at home with me. So they come on in and they sit down. They have uh, their two little, um, like little, they're, I think they're called poofs or something like that, little poofs that they sit on. They could be beanbag chairs, they could be the floor, whatever you'd like, but that's what we use. And then we start with every day we have the same opening song and the same opening poem. Uh, I won't sing the song for you because um, 
singing is not my forte, but I will say our poem. And you will see, I, first of all, I talk with my hands all the time. It's just something that I do. But I also feel like because in a Waldorf education, we are trying to engage three parts of everybody. We're trying to engage their minds, uh, their heads, um, their hearts, which is their feeling capacities, and also their bodies, which is their doing capacities. Because we're trying to engage the head, heart, and hands in every lesson, I try to bring my hands into it because not only does it, um, not only does it then engage our, our bodies, but I feel like it also touches their feelings on their heart as well. So this is our opening poem. We start with Morning has come, night is away, rise with the sun and welcome the day. So they might seem like silly little hand movements, but I find that they're nice, calm, peaceful movements to get us started for our circle time. Then right after that, I have our calendar. Now, um, I made this calendar. This is a, a calendar that I made specifically for my kids because it works in our homeschool. Um, what we do is they come on over. I switch turns because I have two kids. Um, I'll say, okay, to my son today, it's your turn. You come up and you get to move the day on the calendar and then he'll sit down and we'll talk about, okay, what is today? We'll say, for instance, today is Wednesday, May 24th, 2023. And then we'll talk about Wednesday is the day, May is the month, the 24th is the date, and 2023 is the year. And then I go through kind of each component of what that means. Um, and we break down our calendar. Every single day we do this. Time is so abstract, especially for children. They just live in this beautiful little dream world most of the time, and it's hard to, to grasp the, um, what we as adults know as our calendar and day-to-day -day life. So I feel like this really puts a good image to it. Um, so they have an actual visual. And then we talk about it. We start with the days of the week. So I have them stand up that we, I, say, how do we want to do this today? Sometimes we march in a circle. Sometimes we stand in place and make funny dances. It depends on our mood for the day. But then we sing our days of the week song. For us, it's just, it actually goes to the tune of, I think it's the Adams Family, right? It's days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Of the week. Uh, and here comes my dog, of course. She's, she knows what time it is when we do that. So that's our days of the week uh, song. And we'll say, okay, what is today? Today is Wednesday. Or if it's Monday, we discuss, okay, today is Monday. Yesterday was Sunday. Tomorrow is Tuesday. We have a pretty good weekly rhythm in our family. So we'll go through, okay, Monday. What do we do on Mondays? Mondays are laundry days. So that's what we're doing today. We're doing the laundry and we'll go outside today. So we talk about the things that we do on every day because like I said, most of the time, our weeks are pretty similar to each other. We have a good weekly rhythm. So the next part that we discuss on the calendar is our months of the year. So we also have a months of the year song. So then I'll get them to stand up again. And again, we'll decide how do we want to do our months of the year. It gets them involved and feels like they're part of the decision of how they want to present the, the months of the year. But it's very simple. We just sing January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Then I'll have them sit down and I'll say, okay, what month are we in? We're in the month of May. And typically on the calendar, we'll have um, little coins up here that represent different birthdays or different holidays. So we'll say, okay, we're in the month of May. What, do, what are we celebrating this month? Whose birthdays do we have? What holidays or festivals are we celebrating this month? So it's giving them, a, um, we went from 
the, the weekly view to now let's take a look at the month overall. So again, just to help them grasp time and also to help them understand rhythms. And then every month we have a different poem that we say for every month. So I use this book. It's an Elsa Besco book. Um, if you're in the Waldorf circle at all, you know Elsa Besco is um, a much beloved author and illustrator. So she has Around the Year. I believe I got this from Bella Luna Toys. Um, but every month has a beautiful illustration and a poem that goes with it. So uh, I normally, we normally say this and sometimes we do some actions with it. So for instance, for May, it says May is the dancing month. So we like to do a little dance with it or sway. And uh, the beautiful thing about these poems is that because we're presenting them every day, by about the second week, they're simple poems. Normally my kids know a lot of the words. So they're able to join in and help me. So this helps engage their brains, um, their heads, and it helps them to um, really start with recitations and really understanding the beauty of poetry. So we have a May poem. Now, before I got this beautiful book, I did use this book. It's, it's somewhat silly, but I just like having a monthly poem. So you don't have to necessarily go with around the year. Um, I did, this, this was one my mom, who was an elementary school teacher, she had this on hand. It was called Chicken Soup with Rice by Marie Sendak. And these have little silly poems in it. Like for May, it says, I truly, in May, I truly think it's best to be a robin lightly dressed, concocting soup inside my nest. Mix it once, mix it twice, mix that chicken soup with rice. Almost every single one of these ends with something with chicken soup in it. Um, so I feel like just having a monthly poem helps them relate to what month it is. And again, it helps engage their feelings and their heart and helps them to start understanding the beauty of poetry. So then the, the final piece of what we go through as far as a calendar goes is we talk about the seasons. So um, we'll say, okay, what season is it? That's typically a question I ask my children every single day. What season is it? What season is it? So although it's very repetitive, children thrive on repetition, especially in the younger ages. Um, if you think about it, think about if you do have young children or if you've been around young children for an extended period of time, they don't want you to just read the book once. They want you to read the book over and over and over again. Repetition is very near and dear to children's hearts. So it's okay if you are doing the same thing every day. And truthfully, a lot of circle time, a lot of what I do doesn't change that much. It changes on like a month to month basis but we normally stick with uh, what we do every single day for about a month's period of time. So I say, what month is it? And if my son was the one who was able to change our date selector, um, I then have my daughter come up and she gets to take a look outside at the weather and she changes the weather. So in with the seasons, we talk about what the weather is outside and then I, we, in our living room where we do our homeschool, we have these two beautiful big windows and I tell them, a lot of times I have the windows open and I tell them to go look and see what do you see outside that represents spring, that tells you it's spring. Um, so that's typically what we do. And then just like I have a monthly poem, I also have a seasonal poem. So currently, what I'm using, I have this book, it's called The Waldorf Book of Poetry. Um, I mean, it's not just Waldorf poems in here. This is just a collection of poetry that uh, the editor, David Kennedy, believes would be great in Waldorf education, but they're written by poets that we all know, poets and authors that are pretty well known. So, um, that, so with that being said, that means you don't have to go run out and buy the Waldorf book of poetry. I like it. I have a lot of books of poetry around our house, so um, this works for me, but I've used other books before as well. So currently we're reading Spring by William Blake. Um, I like this one for my children because it's just uh, a very easy poem. So it's sound the flute, now it's mute, birds delight, day and night, nightingale in the dale, 
Lark in the sky, merrily, merrily, merrily to welcome in the year. And it keeps going on. Um, again, we're using this poem every single day throughout spring. So my children know it by now. It's the end of May. We've been saying this since the end of March. They know this poem by heart. And what amazed me was when I first started including a seasonal poem, I think my son, it was like a year and a half ago, my son all of a sudden started quoting. We had a, um, uh, oh man, Robert Frost poem for winter. And he was like three and a half and he knew the words and it just shocked me. And he said it was feeling and I was like, oh wow, this is pretty impressive. So I'm not saying that all kids have to do that. It's just that they start to feel it on a much deeper level. Just like the tune of a song will stick with you. These poems will most likely stick with your children even when they're young. So uh, yeah, so this is a great book of poetry, the Waldorf book of poetry. I actually taught um, English at our at a local one of our local universities before so I even used for spring before I used in just by E.E. E. Cummings um, it was a poem I even loved as a child so that was a good one um, and I even have like a garden I think it's a garden poetry book I like art my poems a to be seasonal B to be uh, to represent nature a bit or something of the childhood aspect. And I also like them to be most of the time from real poets. Um, I don't think that we have to be so far advanced to appreciate the beauty of poetry even at a young age. Um, so not that I haven't included some silly poems here or there, but why not take a look? You can, if you just Google um, children's spring poems online, I'm sure you would find one. Just like I'm sure if you Googled May poems for children, I'm sure you would find them. You don't necessarily need those books. So, um, or you might have books sitting on your shelves that might have something ready to go for you. So then after we've spent a decent amount of time on the calendar and uh, on time and seasons, uh, we then actually do our real circle time. So um, we stand up and we have a little um, opening song for our circle time. And I believe, I'm gonna figure out where I got this, this song from. It's not mine, but uh, we just sing a little song saying, come and join in my we ring, in my we ring, in my we ring. Come and join in my we ring and make it a little bit bigger. And it goes on from there. But having these uh, points throughout, these same points that we do every single day throughout our circle time allows our children to know where we are in our circle time. Um, so then after I've introduced that this is our time where we're going to be doing finger plays and songs, then we start them. And these change pretty much every month. Sometimes halfway through the month, if I see that there's some resistance with circle time, which definitely happens. Uh, my son normally, he is, uh, he's very strong willed, which is a beautiful thing. Um, he just, if he's playing, if he was playing with something in the other room, he's, a, he's really big at building things and figuring things out. So for him, um, he doesn't like to be, and once he's doing something, he doesn't like to stop doing it. These are great qualities to have. Um, but there are times that we need to move forward with circle time. So if I've hit some resistance with him coming to circle time, I have enough uh, seasonal, um, seasonal songs and poems that we can do together and finger plays that I can switch it up a little bit. But for the most part, we do pretty much the same songs and poems and finger plays every day throughout a month. Um, my daughter, who's three, she's a little bit easier. She loves circle time. She, the book I'm going to introduce next, she picks this up on her own and sits there and she knows where we are based off of the pictures in the book. So she'll sing the little songs at five o'clock while I'm making dinner. So um, I don't have to convince her too much at this moment. But like I said, with my son, if we're talking real life, there's sometimes resistance to circle time. So the way I sometimes get him engaged is by uh, uh, switching it up a little bit so he doesn't know what songs and finger plays might be coming. 
Now, this is my very beloved book for circle time songs and poems and finger plays and so much more. It is very well loved. I believe this cover falls right off. Uh, this is called A Children's Seasonal Treasury. And if I were to recommend any book as almost a must out of all of these items, it would be this one. It's by Betty Jones. And the, um, she has, they're broken up, broken up by season. And every season has poetry, um, has songs. I use a lot of times the, the poems I use for poetry tea time when we do that. Um, and then the songs and the finger plays, and she'll even give you little instructions as to how to do the finger plays. So that's good. It even has in here, um, because Waldorf early childhood education and kindergarten, it likes to mimic home life, which is what we're doing anyway, um, here at home. It also includes things like art and handwork projects, which are age appropriate. Uh, like how to make little pom-pom animals or caterpillars or butterflies. Um, but it also has seasonal cooking and baking ideas in here as well. So I feel like of all books, if I were to make, uh, if I were to recommend any book out of all of these, the most, I recommend them all. This one by far is my favorite for circle time. Um, so with that being said, I normally go through this. I've used this book now for two and a half years, I believe. So I have already gone through and I kind of make note in here, oh, this one's a really good one for March or this one's a good one for April. This one's a good one for May. So I have them already marked off in here, which makes life easier. And then we just go through them. So like right now, this one is called Daisy by Betty Jones. And it's my kid's favorite one. Um, we, I find like every season they get one that they really love and I'll hear them saying it throughout the day. And this is the one that they really love now. So just as a sample, I'll, I'll tell you it's uh, down. I always do this hand motion too. In fact, uh, it actually says to do these hand motions in the book. It says down in the meadow, I know a pretty daisy. She grows by the minute. She isn't very lazy. She'll never stop her growing until a cow comes by, and then he'll surely munch her and give his hungry sigh. Munch, 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 moo. So I'm sure if you had a whole classroom full of kids, this would be really fun. Um, I'm sure all of these would be really fun for classrooms full of kids, but with even just my two kids, we have a blast with these. And I normally do um, three to four finger plays or songs and verses. So again, those are all based off of season and month. Um, the last thing I do for circle time is we do little beanbag games. Now, once they get into elementary school, beanbag games are going to be uh, more prevalent and probably a little bit more intense. They're gonna be more about math facts and spelling and things like that. But for right now, our beanbag games are very simple, just a little counting, or um, we do our numbers, or we'll spell out each other's names because my kids are really into spelling their names. So beanbags, you can go purchase one. I made these. I actually made these as gifts for my kids for Valentine's Day last year. And they're literally just two pieces of felt that I did the blanket stitch on the outside and I filled them with beans, dried beans from the grocery store. Um, the image that I made on here is just needle felting, which uh, if you're familiar with it, you know, it's like, I think it's pretty therapeutic because you're literally, you have a needle and you're stabbing. <laughs> um, so that might sound silly, but I find it very therapeutic sometimes. Um, it's also just a really beautiful way to make some images on here. Don't feel like you have to. Don't feel like you have to do any of this at all. If you have a beanbag from a beanbag game in your house, you could use that or you could just get two pieces of felt and sew them together. It did not take me that long to make these and my kids love them. And they each have their names, they have their initial for each of theirs on here. So this is my son's. Um, so for our beanbag games right now, 
All we do is we'll sit in a circle together or stand in a circle, depending on the mood of the day. Again, if I've hit some resistance, probably from my son, or even if my daughter is being extra silly, which sometimes happens, then I'll spice it up a little bit. Maybe I'll do it like, oh, we have to go behind our backs and throw it over our shoulder or something like that. The whole purpose of this is to engage the body while we are reciting something. So right now we're just reciting our ABCs and we'll go in a circle and we'll throw it to one another. And it's a silly way to do it, but our mind and our body are both engaged in this. So we might do our ABCs right now. We might count up to 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, depending on how the day is going. Um, and I try to do a couple beanbag games, but by this time, I mean, it's probably been about 20 minutes into it. Um, that might not seem like that long, but to keep young children in one place for that long um, can be difficult. So sometimes they're great and they want to do it, but real talk, sometimes they're just done. Um, and if that's the case, then I'll just do one beanbag game. So then we do a beanbag game for our, our circle time and then we're done. And we always close it out with a little verse. Um, I got this uh, verse, I'll, I can't remember the, for some reason the name of the book is escaping me, it's sitting right up there on the counter. It's a beautiful book by Dr. Catherine Reed um, and it's all about Waldorf home education, but I got this verse from her and it's just, again, I do hand motions. Um, In every seed that will be a tree, there lives an image of all it will be. When I find the image of all I can be, then I will be free. And to me, it's just a nice, beautiful little way of wrapping up our circle time. And it's a great reminder to me and to the kids that the whole purpose of me doing this is that I want them to grow to be whoever they're meant to be. Um, that's like my life's goal is for that to happen. And um, because of that, I just love closing it out with that little verse. It's such a good reminder. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of the structure that we do every day for circle time. Um, but that's just the, the structure that works for me. It's what I've kind of um, uh, worked with and played with over the past two and a half years or so. And it's what I find works best for us. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what works best for you. And the beauty of Waldorf education is that you make it work for you and your family or you and your class. You are the expert on your students, whether that be your biological children, your non-biological children, your students, however that works. Um, you are the expert on those children who are in front of you. And it's best for you to follow and do what works best for your group of students. Now, with all that being said, I'm so glad that you could join me today. If you're interested in more information, first of all, if you wanna see what this looks like in action, there is a video for our May circle time. Um, I probably cut a few things out just mostly because um, of time reasons. I didn't want like a 20 minute long video, but it's still, I think like 14 minutes or something like that. So there is a video of that on my YouTube page. If you're interested in more information, I do have a blog at www.beautifullighthome.com where I talk a little bit more about the calendar and other things that we do in our circle time. If you're interested in that calendar, um, I do sell those calendars. They're on my Etsy shop, which is just beautifullighthome.etsy.com. Beautiful Light Home is all one word. Um, and that's where you'll be able to find my calendars if you're interested in those. And yeah, you can follow along on Instagram as well. I try to post on there as well. So you've got the blog, my Etsy account, my YouTube channel, and my Instagram. Um, and that's where I try to be the most active. So with all that being said, thank you so much. If you're interested in more Waldorf education information, um, especially me trying to make it real and accessible for you, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I also include, um, I'm a beekeeper and we have like a two acre mini farm at our house where we try to do a lot of regenerative farming techniques. Um, that's mostly my husband's stuff, but I do try to showcase it from time to time and just our backyard farm life. Um, those videos will be there as well, but I'm just very appreciative of you. So um, 
thank you so much. And if you have other ideas for your circle time, I'm always looking to, to grow and to implement new things. And I'd love to hear what you're doing for your circle time. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.